A recent release of seven Europeans held in Iran has raised hopes that more would follow, but more than a dozen Western passport holders remain detained in the Islamic Republic. They include at least two German nationals. One of them is 68-year-old Nahid Takavi. DW met with her daughter, who is fighting for her mother's freedom. Her phone has become Mariam Kilaren's sharpest weapon. From the moment her mother, Nahid Taghavi, became a political prisoner in Iran almost three years ago. It's always a, um, a fight between fear and fighting back, you know. Um, when my mom was arrested, um, I decided to go public with her case immediately. And this is not an easy decision, you know. Um, because everybody, so a lot of people say, and especially the Islamic Republic say, stay quiet, and this is going to be solved. And, um, and an instinct told me, no, you need to go public. This is the best way to protect her. And so Mariam campaigns for her mother's release from Tehran's notorious Evin prison. But the 68-year-old women's rights activist has been imprisoned for national security violations charges that are completely fabricated according to her family. The only reason her mother is in jail, Mariam says, is her German citizenship, because the Islamic Republic is using her to put pressure on Berlin. That became apparent when Nahid Taghavi was on brief medical leave last year, Mariam tells me. She was taken back to prison at the time when the German chancellor and the German foreign minister spoke out against the uh, repression after the uprising, after the death of Gina Massa Amini. So we saw that um, they are taking revenge on my mother for something that Germany is doing. This is something that Germany needs to understand, that my mother's... Uh, imprisonment depends on what Germany does. And Germany, Mariam stresses, is not doing enough when it comes to standing up for her mother. We have seen in the last two and a half years, more than two and a half years, that a silent diplomacy and um, advocating in the way they do does not work. So I can repeat what I've been telling them since three years. You need to change your strategy. You need to be more brave. It's in your responsibility. If something happens to my mother in Evin prison, I bl will blame it on Berlin. Her biggest wish, she says, is that the doors of Evin will open soon and her mother, Nahid Taghavi, and all the other political prisoners can live in peace and freedom. I'm very pleased to welcome Yvonne Rie, a member of the German parliament for the governing Social Democrats. She's one of many German politicians who have taken on a political sponsorship of Iranian prisoners uh, campaigning for their release. Now, uh, rights groups claim that Iran detains Western passport holders as part of a deliberate policy of hostage taking in order to extract concessions from foreign governments. Would, would you agree with that? Well, it's pretty apparent that they are doing that. Um, the special thing is that they are not doing it at, or they are not doing it for only German nationals, but they are only doing it for binationals, so people who have a, who had an Iranian passport and have another passport too. So the binationals are the ones that they are targeting, and I would say they are taking them as hostages, as political hostages. So how should Western governments react? In our report, we saw there the daughter of an Iranian German citizen in prison in Tehran who said that silent diplomacy doesn't work and that a new strategy was needed. I think the most important thing is, and I think that's one of the things that we saw in the last couple of months, is that the European countries have to work together and they have to have a, um, a, a strategy as one. Because right now, you, you mentioned it in um, what we saw before, that um, a lot of countries um, got their nationals released. Germany is one of uh, the countries who didn't get any prisoners released. So it's like all the national interests are playing into those ga the game of the Iranian um, regime. So I think it's very important that we have one strategy and only one and speak as one. And that's the biggest challenge that we're having in Europe right now. And what exactly should a united strategy look like then? 
Um, for once, there are a lot of people, activists, uh, but also people living in Iran who are um, calling for the terror listing of the RGC. Um, and I think the most important thing is that if we want to do those things and if we want to um, um, make those sanctions much heavier and much um, harder, then we have to do it together and then we have to um, like agree on what are those things that we demand of. And if, if we have demands, we have to do them together and not just get divided upon it. So I think we have to get very, very hard sanctions on the Islamic Republic of Iran, but also um, have a clue and an agenda what we are demanding from the Iranian regime if they are um, trying to negotiate with the European Union. Yeah, I'd like to pick up on that because four years ago in 2019, the U.S. government designated Iran's Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization. Um, what do you think the blockades are that are stopping the EU from doing the same? Um, as I said before, it's much harder to do at the, Euro the European Union because um, we have 27 member states and it has to be unanimously, so all states have to agree on that and no state is allowed to veto. So there, there are so many different interests playing into um, into this game and I think that's one of the things that um, makes us much less um, efficient than the US. I think that's one of the things that, that we have to, like, I don't know, we have to have a look on how the U.S. deal with that and deal with it accordingly. Mm. But even at a national level, Germany is still one of Iran's main European trading partners. Is it reasonable to do business with a country that's terrorizing its own people and supporting Russia's war in Ukraine? It is not, and um, the German government has um, cut down a lot of activities, and um, even although um, bilateral negotiations have been put on ice, so it's not like as we are expanding our, our business with the Iranian regime or the Iranian economy. So um, I think we are doing as much as we can to, to, to put um, the pressure on Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran and supporting the Iranian people, and I think that's something that we should do as Europe as a whole. Well, thank you very much for joining us on DW News. That was German lawmaker Yevon Rie. Thank you.